All right, going to show how the Calvinist false doctrine of irresistible grace attacks the scriptural doctrine of personal accountability for your sins. You see, you're accountable for your own actions, but you see, the thing of irresistible grace is that it basically says that God's grace is irresistible, that when basically that, that God's grace can't be resisted. And I'm going to show some scriptures showing that God's grace actually can, in fact, be resisted, and that not only is God's grace being resisted, but God's holding the person personally accountable for doing so, showing that you have free will and that your choices are your responsibility. Okay, and you're held accountable for your choices. You see, if Calvinism was correct, that means we could just blame God for our choices. Because we could say, well, God, that means you predetermined me to reject your grace. You know? It, see, Calvinism is a mess of a false doctrine. Uh, it's just a gateway to, I mean, when you deny free will, it's just a gateway to all other, other kinds of weird heresies. But, like I said, God's grace can, in fact, be resisted. And when God's grace is resisted, the person resisting it has no way to blame but himself. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 6 to 7. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain, and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, After she had done all these things, turn thou unto me, and she, but she returned not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Notice that. God saying, Hey, turn to me. Come on, please turn to me. He's, he's you know, beseeching them to turn to him, and they're refusing to do so, and God's you know, condemning them for making that choice. But you see, if there's irresistible grace, not only would Israel not have the ability to not to not turn to God, because they could they they could because see right here they're resisting his grace. You know, they're resisting his call. What do you do with that if you think that God's grace can't be resisted? It makes a problem for Calvinistic theology, but you see God's holding them accountable for doing so. But you see, if Calvinism were true, it would destroy any kind of personal accountability. More scriptures on the matter. Second Kings seventeen verse thirteen to fourteen. Second Kings chapter seventeen verse thirteen down to verse fourteen says, Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, which I and which sorry and which I sent to you by my servants and the prophets. Uh, notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks. Like to the neck of their like like to the neck of their fathers, uh, that did not believe in the Lord their God. Notice that he's beseeching them to, to follow his commandments, and they're not obeying him. They're resisting his grace and his you know call to obey his commandments. See, they have free will. They made the choice to resist, and God is you know holding them accountable for doing so. Judges chapter six verses nine down to verse ten. And, you know, I do apologize, not the best at reading things on a computer. I do it like this just so I can get to the scriptures quicker, uh, so it's more convenient. But Judges chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. And I delivered you out of the land of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out uh, from before you and gave you and gave you their land. Sorry, and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Again, they're resisting out of their own free will, and God's holding them accountable for doing so. Next point is that God clearly told the Israelites how he would punish them if they disobeyed his commands, showing that, yeah, that number one, they had free will, and number two, if they were punished by God, they had no way to blame but themselves. Okay, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 14 down to verse 21. That passage right there just destroys Calvinism because it proves free will and it proves that you can resist God's grace. Uh, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 14 down to verse 21. All right, so like I said, this passage here, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 14 down to verse 21, totally refutes and destroys the false Calvinistic doctrine of limit of Brissy. It essentially destroys irresistible grace and proves free will, and also proves that you're held accountable for your own actions and that God's grace can, in fact, be resisted. Leviticus 26, verse 14 down to verse 21 says, but if you will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandment, commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague, that shall consume your, that, can, that shall consume the eyes, and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee, and, and, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if you will not uh, yet for all this, 
hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins, and I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your uh, heaven as iron, and your earth as brass, and your strength shall be sp shall be spent in vain, for your land uh, for your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And if you walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more seven times more plagues upon you, according to your sins. Notice that if ye you know if ye see they had the choice. He's saying you know. He's telling me this is what happens if you choose not to obey me, essentially. Now, the text doesn't say the word choose, but we see there, if ye. You see, it's personal choice. They have the ability to choose to either serve God or not to serve God. And if they chose not to serve God, God's punishing them and they have no way to blame but themselves. That's simple. God's telling them this is this is the standard. Okay. And also, you can compare this over to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24 down to verse 31, further showing that your sins are your own fault because you did them by your own free will choice. And this also pass, this passage here also proves that you, you can actually still, in fact, resist God's grace. I'll put it that way. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24 down to verse 31. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24 down to verse 31. says, because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched up my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set ye have set at naught all my counsel and with none of my reproof. I will I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Uh, then they shall call upon me, but I will not uh, call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with the with their own devices. Notice that they did not choose the fear of the Lord. You know, I called and you refused. And what's happening? They're being held accountable for their actions, and they've resisted God's grace. And as a result, they have nobody to blame but themselves for being held accountable for their own actions. See, these passages right here are scriptures like Leviticus 26, verse 14, down to verse 21, and Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24, uh, I think it's Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24, down to verse 31. Uh, it, said, it clearly shows that you can resist God's grace and that your sins are your, your own responsibility. You're held accountable for them. But you see, if Calvinism were true, it would destroy any kind of personal accountability there. That simple. Calvinism is a false doctrine. Calvinism is, I believe, a de one of the, one of Satan's attacks on the righteousness of God as well as of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.